GoPro, start recording. Today is a very exciting day. Why? Because I got a package that I've been waiting for for nearly a month. And here it is. What's inside here is the motor for my DJI Spark. Take a look at that. Brand new Spark motor. This is to replace the damaged motor. It looks just like the motors that are in the Spark. Now I'm gonna show you how it works. In addition to this motor, I had another surprise even pretty quickly. This sits on top of the motor like that. And what this does is it allows the propellers to connect to the motor. One of those was damaged as well, even though it works, it's better to have one that's not damaged. So that's getting replaced today as well. Here you can see the damaged arm. I know at the end of the last video, the arm was actually repaired, but the plastic adhesive product that I used wasn't that great. It seemed like it worked. I launched the Spark, I flew around, I did some aggressive flying to see how well it would hold up. I brought the Spark in, the flight was perfect, but then I could see that the joint was starting to tear away. So what I did was I completed re-breaking the joint. I decided to clean up the joint, try to get any residue or loose particles off using a metal wire brush, and then use Use the gel type of super glue to put it back together. The gel type is a bit better than the liquid type because the glue actually stays where it's supposed to and you end up with a stronger bond. I then continued and decided to plastic weld the joint. So I first melted the plastic and tried to get rid of as much of the seam as I could and then I added some additional plastic that I melted on in order to reinforce the joint. I quickly found out that a soldering iron temperature of 400 degrees was much too hot and simply burned the plastic. Backing off the temperature to 250 degrees yielded a much better result. After completing the repair and reinstalling the motor, which was simply the reverse of removing the motor, I decided to move on to the next step which was replacing the damaged motor on a different arm. In this video clip you can see clearly where the damage is. When the props spin up you can see all of them spinning, but as soon as the power is cut to the props you immediately see the front left prop stop while the other ones continue to spin due to momentum. This shows the increased resistance in this motor and that's why it needs to be replaced. In the in the previous video, I detailed the steps on how to remove a motor from the prop arm. So I'm just going to breeze through those steps really quickly right now. First, you have to remove the two top screws from the propeller mount as well as the spring. Then you remove the propeller mount and flip the spark over. The next step is to remove the LED cap and then remove two screws for the cap that hold the ESC. Then you simply pull out the ESC and you reveal three screws that hold the motor. Once you've done that, the motor is free. In order to remove the motor from the ESC, two things need to be done. First, there is some silicone adhesive on top of the joints to increase the durability and longevity of the joint. And then next, the actual wires have to be desoldered from the ESC. In order to remove the adhesive, you need to kind of pry and pull at it with tweezers or a small screwdriver, something like that. The next step would be to actually desolder the wires. They're slotted into the ESC and not pushed through a hole, so that makes it a little bit easier. But despite this, this took me several attempts before I was actually able to remove the wire. Here you can see me removing the first wire, but unfortunately the camera cut out and didn't catch the second and third wire. Installation begins by threading the three wires from the new motor through the hole in the arm. I'd like to note that the wire colors on the replacement motor that I received did not match the wire colors on the original DJI motor. All I did was match up the position of the wires instead of the color of the wires, and that seemed to work. Soldering the new wires in was also a little bit of a struggle just due to the size of everything, but after many attempts, I finally figured out that adding a little bit of extra solder to each pad and then using that to heat up the entire assembly helped quite a bit. I also had to be careful not to burn any of the components on the ESC, as everything is pretty close together. Exercising caution and taking my time was the best solution to this. After completing soldering on the ESC, the next step is to screw the motor back into the arm. Please note that it is important to add some blue Loctite while doing this, so that the motors don't unscrew themselves from vibrations during flight. 
it is then a good idea to add some silicone sealant to the places that you just soldered. This replicates what DJI did from the factory and will ensure that your work holds up in the long term. After that, assembly is simply the two screws that hold in the ESC and its cover and then snapping on the LED cover. Flipping the drone to its other side, you can now reinstall the prop hat with its spring and two screws. I also had to change the prop hat on the other motor in the back, so here's me doing that as well. I found that installing prop guards would reinforce the damaged area on the arm. Not wanting to fly around with prop guards, I searched online for an alternate solution. I found some prop guards that also had landing gear, bought those for a couple bucks from AliExpress, and chopped off the prop guard part, leaving the reinforcement and the landing gear intact. Install these and a set of props and we're ready to fly. First, we test takeoff and landing. Good. Then we can fly around for a little bit in normal mode. This also looks good. Let's try out obstacle avoidance. This seems to work. Time for sport mode. That also looks like it works perfectly. Finally, we try return to home. Here it comes. And it's back. Looks like a great success. 